Hey everybody, Chef Danny here with the North America Pizza and Culinary Academy. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to make our tavern style dough here. We're going to do this at about a 54% hydration, a little bit more like a cracker rather than your higher hydrations around 57, 58. Gives a little more chew. What I have right here is all-purpose Sarasota, which is a little bit of a higher protein, but this is the standard in Chicago's when it comes to making uh, tavern style and deep dish and stuffed pizza because of the higher protein level. So what I have here is one kilo of flour and 540 grams of water. So I'm gonna make a well in the bottom of this bowl and I'm gonna push this all the way up the sides. Now I'm gonna pour all this water right into the middle. So we have our water in. Next thing we're gonna do is because we cook Chicago style tavern crust under 500 degrees, we need to add a little bit of sugar so we get some caramelization. So what I have here, a couple grams of sugar, and I'm gonna let that dissolve in the water. Take my whisk, stir it up. Because the first thing that those yeast want is they want something to eat and that sugar is gonna be it. So next thing I have, is my instant dry yeast. You can use active, but make sure you activate it, um, or fresh. Just make sure that if you're at the store and buying fresh yeast, check the date. It's got about 30 days on it before it goes bad. So now there's a little bit of food in that water for these yeast. So let's wake them up. Okay, nice and easy. We don't want any clumping. Now this is a lot of yeast, but normally this dough is used very quickly because it's put through a sheeter or a press so that you don't need to worry as much about the gluten. So now, going with my whisk, just gonna wake up those yeast. Get them all nice and hydrated. Get them to start feeding on that available sugar. So then they're gonna start feeding and you're gonna get more flavor out of it soon. Okay? Now, take my pinky and my thumb, start to bring in a little bit of the flour at a time. I only have probably a very thin pancake batter, as I would say, but as we continue to absorb and mix and spin the bowl, because it's not static, we're going to develop our gluten. You can see it already beginning. You're getting these nice strands, okay? So some recipes will call for malt. Um, other ones, if you don't have malt, white table sugar is completely usable and swapping out with it. All right, so like I said, this is gonna be a dry dough, but in Chicago, we have a lot of, you can use lard, we use canola oil, you can use any kind you want. Olive oil, we don't tend to use on our American pizzas just because we feel it's a waste of a good quality oil. For this, we want a nice high fat dough that's going to get extra crispy because we're gonna bake it for a longer period of time. So we're gonna evaporate off a lot of that water. So what I got here is I got my canola oil, nothing special. You can use grapeseed, you can use, like I said, lard. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just keep mixing. And I'm taking the bowl and I'm just folding it over, okay? Some people have a tendency to grab and squeeze you don't really want to do that. You want to nice and fold it over because we want to create those layers because a Chicago tavern style pizza is more like a biscuit or a cracker. Whereas when you cut into it, you're going to see those different layers. Like if you're eating a saltine, it's going to be the very same. So now I added my oil first. It's going to coat my gluten strands. It's also going to protect my yeast from the salt because that salt is going to try to pull the moisture that we just added to them right out of it. So we wake them up and then we add a lot of salt. They're going to slow down and we're not going to get as good of a rise or flavor profile out of it. So look at that real quick. The dough came together. Okay. So next we have kosher salt. Now, what we say around here is if you have that blue cylinder with the girl with the umbrella, iodized table salt, as everyone grew up with, take it, put it in your garage, melt some slugs, melt some ice in the wintertime. We just don't recommend you use it. It's just a lot more salty flavor per teaspoon than a nice clean kosher or fine sea salt. 
So kosher salt. Uh, we don't recommend using anything like a Himalayan or a colored sea salt because they bring a lot of extra minerals and those minerals can give you off flavors or different results every time. So as I take this and knead it, you will see that because it's a lower hydration dough, it's gonna be a lot harder to knead. But, take my dough ball out. I got this, let me do a scraper. Okay. Now we wanna make sure we get all this stuff out of the bowl, okay? That's all part of our recipe. So, just like this, pour it out on the table, okay? You can see it's got some strength to it already, but it's not mixed well enough. So what we're gonna do, make it kind of a long shape. I'm gonna pick it up with my fingertips. I'm gonna roll it over with the heel of my hand. I'm just gonna roll it in on itself, nice and easy. I am not trying to give it CPR. I'm not trying to push it through the table. I'm just rolling it in on itself, nice and easy, because all we're trying to do is make sure that all those ingredients mix evenly within this dough and that we strengthen that gluten net. So while I do this, I would not recommend doing this part in a KitchenAid unless you have the professional series because this is what's going to make you have to buy a brand new uh, KitchenAid. And I don't know if anyone wants to do that. So I'm gonna take this dough and I'm gonna knead it, fold it, and knead it some more, okay? You're gonna see the dough's gonna start to come together, but because it's so dry, you're gonna get different kind of layers until all that oil gets mixed in nicely. You can see the proteins on this are building pretty tight because they're starting to get a little bit shredding. So I'm gonna take this knee a few more times and then we're gonna give it a rest. Let those proteins relax, let the flour absorb that oil, water, the salt's gonna dissolve. Um, I like to make sure that my salt is dissolved because if you go to portion this and you cut into it, you're gonna find little pockets of moisture where the salt didn't dissolve, so it pulled it out of the dough and that's gonna give you bigger bubbles in your crust. Okay. All right, so form it into a dough bowl. We're gonna take our bowl, we're gonna cover it, and we're gonna wait about 15 minutes and let those proteins relax. Hey everybody, we're back. Our dough has rested. So if you look closer at it, you'll actually see a little bit of some spots of moisture. That's the salt that didn't dissolve all the way yet, and it's pulled the moisture out of the dough. This is why we wanna let the dough rest. We wanna let the proteins relax. So now I'm gonna pick it up with the dough scraper. I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm gonna go back to our kneading technique. Fingers over the top, fold it over, and we're just doing, it's almost like doing the little uh, Kula, you know, kind of thing, except for just forward. So, I'm gonna keep kneading this, and now by rolling it over, we're gonna make a nice, strong, layered dough that's gonna hold a lot more gas and flavor from that yeast. Okay, look at that, the dough tightened up nicely. Now, as you can see, the dough has smoothed out incredibly. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you what all that rolling and kneading did by taking my dough ball and I'm gonna cut it. Now if you look real close here, you can see all these lines and that's the layers of rolling that we did and that's a lot more strength for our dough later on when we go to stretch it so it doesn't tear, okay? Now in some Chicago pizzerias, the pizza guy will take a ball of this, it doesn't matter the weight, and he's gonna put it through a dough sheeter, cut off the excess, and then make this pizza. So I take my dough ball, press it down, squeeze it, press and squeeze again, all right? The tightness of this dough ball is not as important, but I like to make sure I have a nice smooth outer skin. Do the same with all of these. 
okay? There's a couple techniques. You have the one hand, more advanced. We have the two hand, which a lot of people just, when they come here, they just kind of roll it over on itself. But what you're trying to do is create a nice skin on the outside and a tight pocket on the bottom. You don't want any air hole down there because it'll be the first thin spot in your pizza. Take that. Okay. Press this in. I'm trying to make sure there's no air pocket. Nice and tight. Okay. Now we have this. So we have all different sizes, but we're going to roll these out with a rolling pin. We'll take a, a shape, a round circle. We'll cut off the excess. We'll show you guys how we make a Chicago pizza at home. 